Hello, Jose here at Rick Motec. Before I get started on this video, if you wouldn't mind, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It's really gonna help us out and we're really trying to help as many sim racers get the most out of their simulators. So you'd be really helping us out and you'd be really helping out a lot of other people. Getting started on today's video, I wanna go through all of what I think the iRacing essential controls are. This is everything that I have either mapped to a steering wheel button or I have mapped to a button box. So I'm gonna move over onto iRacing to get started. Once you've launched up your session and you're in game, you're gonna to wanna to go over to the options tab. Once you're in the options tab, you've got several other tabs down here, but this first one here, uh, we're gonna work on this, uh, particularly here on the right hand side. We've got the enter, exit, and tow car button. This button is probably the button that you're gonna use the most. So it's a button that I always recommend putting somewhere that it's comfortable and easily accessible. This button gets you in and out of the car. And if you crash somewhere on track, it's actually gonna be the button that you're gonna push and hold to uh, tow you and take you back to the pits. Below that, we have the look left and look right. This is really helpful for people that are running on a single screen. If you have a, a funky switch or a little joystick on your wheel, it's really easy to be able to look left and right in the car. And just below that, it's the look up and look down. This isn't really a button that I recommend or even that I use or have seen used for that matter. It's kind of weird to be able to like look up and down in the car, but it's there. If you want to use it, it's there. Moving down to uh, the option tab down here. So don't get that confused with the main options screen. This is now going to be specific options uh, within this options menu. And we're gonna start with the split time delta section. So right up here, uh, I don't know if you've seen on iRacing where if they're driving and they've got the, uh, the delta time bar up on top, it's going green to red. So this is what that bar is if you if you're looking for that, I know a lot of new guys are trying to figure out, hey, well, how do I see my time? Well, this is defaulted to the tab key on your keyboard, but you can change it to anything. I've actually got it here on a button box. So I'm able to cycle through the different types of deltas. Right below that is the ghost car, which for me personally, I don't like the ghost car. I run without it. It becomes a distraction. Uh, so I just prefer to run without it. So. Having that on a button, if for whatever reason you wanna, you wanna chase the ghost car, you can toggle it on and then toggle it off when you're done. And then moving over onto the right-hand side of that same screen, we've got a whole bunch of it's single press commands. So you've got chat commands and then you also have pit stop commands. So if you're somebody that uses the chat and you apologize to somebody or you want to say thanks, or I believe you can change these as well. So if, again, if you're somebody that uses the chat, this could be a good way to uh, save yourself some time. Instead of having to type those messages out, you can put them on a button and be able to send them out immediately. Below that on that same menu is pit stop commands. So you can have, it's, I guess it's kind of a macro where you can send a text command to be able to tell the pit stop uh, what you need for tires or what you need for fuel. And then moving on into the misc or the miscellaneous section down here, there's not a whole lot, but if you're somebody that likes to uh, shoot video or capture screenshots, then right here, you wanna enable this. And these two commands here, you can change that for a button to be able to uh, capture video or do a screen capture. I'm gonna skip over graphic and replay section since there's not a whole lot to map in there. So we're gonna move directly on over into sound. Sound right here on sound levels, the louder and quieter options. I've got this on a knob here. This is just the main volume for iRacing. Sometimes we have customers here or uh, you know, depending on your situation, Sometimes it's easier to just turn down the iRacing volume than to have to grab the keyboard and mouse if you don't know where it is. Uh, I have it here on a button so that it just makes it easier to turn down the volume or turn it back up when I need to. Moving over onto the voice chat section of this page. So if you have voice chat enabled, my recommendation is you wanna have a push to talk so that you're able to push to talk to communicate on track or to your team or whoever you're talking to. And then louder, quieter and mute. Louder, quieter is gonna be your volume control and mute, if you're somebody like me, I, I cannot stand running with the microphone or comms or anything like that on in the middle of a race, it just gets really distracting. So I'd be somebody that would have a mute button to be able to cut all that out.
Earth. Now, the last few sections, they didn't have a whole lot to map, so we got through all of that pretty quickly. Now, when we move over onto the iRacing control section, you're gonna see a lot more. Uh, and I'm doing this specifically with the Mercedes W12 Formula One car. There's a lot that you can map into that car, so I just chose that so that you can see all of the different options. So if we move on to control, we've got a whole bunch here. We've got a whole bunch of different controls. Some of them that can be activated for this car, some of them that cannot be, some of them that are global for all of iRacing. So I'm gonna start from the top and I'm gonna work my way down talking about all the ones that I think um, I consider essential. Starting off with the second clutch, this is something that is pretty recent to me because when I started running with hydraulic pedals, the clutch on this pedal set is quite heavy. So if I have to spin the car back around or if I'm in a situation where I lose the car and I spin out and I need to get back on track, um, having a second clutch mapped and specifically to the wheel, like some of these wheels they have uh, the dual clutch, you can map the dual clutch to one of those, uh, which in cases like that where you're gonna lose the car, this is a lot easier to catch than um, having to slam your foot into a foot clutch. Second upshift and downshift may not make sense to some people, but it could actually work out depending on if you're having hardware issues. I've heard the Fnatic, uh, even I had a problem with my Fnatic V2 wheel where the shifter stopped working on the advanced paddle, uh, on the advanced paddle module. I can never say that right. Um, but having a second set of shifters, um, if you have that module, you've got the two other buttons on top. My Rexing has two additional buttons on top. So if for whatever reason you're in a pretty important race or you, know, you don't want those things to fail, that's a good option to sometimes have them mapped as a second set so that you have a backup. These next two are the ignition and starter. And if I go back to when I started sim racing, this was the very first thing that put the biggest smile on my face. Being able to flip a switch and engage a starter uh, while I'm sitting in a, in a video game was really cool. So I definitely have that assigned on all of my cars, but I do know a lot of people that just run the automatic engine start and ignition. So uh, it's more for immersion. It's definitely not gonna do anything for performance, but it's something that I love. Moving on down to the headlight flash. So if you're running multi-class, uh, usually if you're running um, in the prototypes or if you're just running in any multi-class situation where you're in a car that's faster than the next one, then you're gonna probably see a lot of lights flashing to get out of the way, you know, let somebody know that you're coming up. So having that button, um, being able to, to flash lights, uh, that's really important. Another one that could be used automatically, it's the pit speed limiter. This is something else though that I find uh, really immersive. I spent a lot of time creating a dashboard just specific for the pit for the pit lane and engaging the pit speed limiter, it's, it's fun. The whole dashboard changes and there's a whole bunch of lights that go off and change. So yeah, it's an important button. You don't want to speed in the pit limit in iRacing because if not, you're going to get a penalty. So if you're not running a automatic pit speed limiter, and that's definitely a button I recommend you put on. I do know somebody by the name of Kevin that doesn't run a pit speed limiter. How he does it, I don't know, but I hear he's very good at, uh, at keeping that speed just right. Next up is the push to pass or overtake. Uh, this is more for the IndyCar guys. So if you're using that feature on the car, definitely put it on a button because having to uh, reach for the keyboard and mouse while you're in that situation, um, probably not gonna work out very well. And this next one is for my Formula One people. We get so many people asking, where's the DRS button? So yes, there is a DRS button on iRacing. You can map it to a button. So make sure you do that so that you can really maximize uh, all of the speed on the F1 car. Uh, and I believe the Formula Renault 3.5 also has DRS. So uh, yeah, you can flip the DRS on, on iRacing. This next section is all about the in-car adjustments. So starting off with your brake bias, this is your standard brake bias as you would be using it in the car. So just forward or back. Um, and then below that is brake bias fine set. So uh, on the Formula One car and on a lot of cars, you may see that the brake bias, it's a whole number plus a decimal. So on, for example, the Ferrari, if I'm scrolling through the different brake bias values, um, I can't affect that decimal. In the F1 car, I can affect both the whole number 
and the decimal point separately. So that's really helpful to be able to have um, that break bias and the break bias fine set set up. And then coming down below that, there's two more um, options for the F1 car. It's the peak brake bias, which is your brake migration. If you hover over uh, the uh, the peak brake bias option on, in the uh, in the setup window of of the car, you know, you'll be able to get a much better idea of what brake brake migration does. And then the last one below that is brake. Um, they call it brake miscellaneous. It's the brake magic. So if you're familiar with uh, the brake magic system on uh, the W12, it's the button that um, Lewis can activate to be able to send all of the brake bias forward all the way to the car um, during a formation lap. This way he gets all the heat into the tires that he can, and then he can immediately turn it off. So uh, the reason for that is being able to send brake pressure forward that quickly, um, instead of having to ramp it up, um, the driver's going to need that much faster uh, during a formation lap when that feature is being used. So if you're using the F1 car, it's, uh, it's a fun feature to use. The next two are for IndyCar drivers. This is gonna be your front and rear anti-roll bar. So if you're running setups that uh, require you to use that, that's an essential button that I recommend you use. Next up is ABS and traction control set. This goes across a lot of cars. A lot of cars, they do have the ABS and traction control functions that you can um, affect independently. So here on iRacing, you can do the exact same thing. And with all the buttons that we have available to us, I usually put traction and ABS so that when I'm playing around with the car and throwing the car around, I have a lot more control of it. And speaking of traction, one button that I use a lot is the traction control toggle button. Whenever I spin out and need to get the car back around, some of these cars, they are running traction control. So if you go to dump the clutch and try to whip the car around, it's just gonna bog out and, and probably stall. So pushing or holding that button, which I've talked about in the video I did where I set up my wheel. If you just push and hold that or pull and hold that, uh, it you know temporarily disables the traction control so that I can whip the car back around and get to where I was going. The next one is for cars that run different DDUs or digital display units with different dashboards built in. So a Ferrari, uh, the Lamborghini, I know the Lamborghini has like four or five different dashboards for quality mode um, and day and night modes. So if you're running a car with that and you wanna be able to use that, making a button assigned to the dash page set button, that's gonna be able to um, go forward and back on the pages on the, on the DDU. The last set of in-car options, it's for mostly the F1 cars and the prototypes. So that's gonna be the diff entry, diff middle, diff exit, the engine braking, and the MGUK deploy. Starting off with the diffs, that's obviously your differentials for your entry, middle, and exit of the corner. So if you're, if you're really trying to extract everything out of the F1 car, you need that stuff. This is um, incredibly important and it does make a massive difference when you're starting to play with the differential. When you get back on throttle, you can see a difference there. And then for the engine braking, this is something that you want to use to like really optimize your braking. You've done everything else on the brake. You need to now use engine braking. You can finally tune what the engine is doing uh, so that you can use that engine braking really to your advantage. And lastly, the MGUK deploy mode. So whether you're in testing, quality, or race, you're gonna need to do some changes to the MGUK or to the hybrid system. Uh, quality mode, balance mode, and the attack mode, all of that stuff needs to be changed unless you're running a fixed race where it's, it's not being changed at all. So if you are running a race where it's being changed, get that MGUK button assigned to something and, and have a whole lot of fun with it. Moving on to some items that I consider more tools than anything. Uh, starting off with the speed gear display. Uh, this is really helpful to have if you don't have a dashboard or don't have any way to like know what the car is doing in terms of speed um, or your uh, throttle and brake inputs. It's a small little black box um, and you can have that toggle on and off so that uh, you can see your speed and you can see your inputs if you ever need to see that. Moving on to the virtual mirror. Um, this was something that I found essential to have on a button for me when I started running the F3 in VR, uh, especially during qualifying, the mirror itself just became a distraction. So I wanted to be able to quickly turn it off. 
Every now and then I'll turn it on, uh, but it's really nice still to just have it on a button so that whenever it gets distracting, I can turn it off quickly. Next up, and to finish up that group of tools, it's the uh, toggle telemetry. So toggling telemetry, I wanna have that on a button. Sometimes I'm doing uh, data sessions where I'm recording data for testing, and I wanna be able to flip that on and send data to the iRacing file. I talked about it when I did my button box video. Sometimes I wanna have that off just to be able to save data on the PC. So if you spent any time around iRacing, you've probably heard about black boxes. There's a whole bunch that I use and um, a whole bunch that I have on buttons. So I'm gonna go, go down the list here and talk about the ones that I use. Starting off here with uh, lap timing. This one here gives me a lot of information on the race itself. So how much time is left, how many incidents I have, uh, best overall lap, uh, and just some other basic information. So that's a good black box to have um, just to get overall uh, general information. After that, I use the relative. This gives me gap in front and gap behind. So I believe it's three cars in front, three cars behind. And this gives me a really good idea of where everybody is on track. After that, we've got fuel and tires. Uh, here we can play around with how much fuel we want to add at the pit stop. Uh, depending on the car we're driving, we can change tire compound, we can change tire pressure. Um, so this tire black box, I have that on a button. So if I'm coming back into a pit stop and I need to do something to the tires, I can just flip that on and do it there. As we keep coming down, we've got the in-car adjustments black box. Uh, this specifically I've been using recently, the uh, LMP3 for some reason on VR does not have any uh, indication of what the brake bias is. So I just have that set up so that I can pull, um, pull a button on my wheel and see what the brake bias value is. Uh, I do play around with that uh, in the middle of the race, so I wanna know what that's looking like. The next black box, and it's the final black box, it's the mirror and graphic adjustments. And for some weird reason, they decided to put the force feedback in there. So the uh, mirror uh, black box, that's where the force feedback is which then leads me to all of the other buttons that I wanna talk about, um, which if you've seen my video talking about the how I set up my wheel, if you've got something like a seven-way funky switch, you can set up these select next previous increment and decrement selected controls. You can use that to uh, scroll through your black box and make any of your changes. This last one is for the people that run in VR. Uh, the recenter HMD is a super important button to have. Uh, if you haven't been in VR before, uh, sometimes the VR tends to move around. So you want to be able to have a button ready to go to be able to center your view uh, so that it that doesn't look all kind of wonky when you're in the VR headset. That's it for this one. Remember, if you're looking for SIM support, click the QR code. That's going to take you to the website talking about all the SIM support options that we have as we continue to make sure to maximize your SIM racing experience. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.